remember me? Beverly Center. It's been a few years, maybe 20. I'm Rhonda's better half. Where is she? I don't know. I've hijacked the show from her tonight. You know, the little social hour uh, thing she's been doing every Saturday night at 9 p.m.? <laughs> well, I'm your new host, Beverly Center. What do you think about that? I know she does. There's only one thing that I like, just one thing. She always says hair and then takes a drink, but she's not me. She doesn't drink the good stuff. So when I say hair, because I'm your host tonight, have a drink. Hair! So, I know she has these guests on tonight, but don't worry, I'm taking that one. She's got that Rockin' Doopsy Junior from New Orleans. He's very famous, world famous. Zydeco players. Plays, all over, plays the washboard on his chest. Amazing. She's got Baby Doll. Baby Doll uh, did a little time. Yep, she's very famous from Los Angeles. She was a madam, a madam, I'm the best madam. Anyway, and then she's got that Jim Katz. You know, he's a stand-up comic, and he's a producer, writer, and he's got these corny awards. And you'll meet them all. They're all fabulous. But, you know, as long as I'm on the air, who cares? It's all about Beverly Center. You're going to learn to love me if you haven't seen me in a long time. Look, I'm playing it safe. This is my shield. It's got rhinestones on it. Because I've got class. And that Rhonda, she doesn't. Anyway, we're going to have some fun tonight. So let's get going with Beverly Center's social hour. Ha, <laughs> yeah. ha, Stuck at home and you don't know what to do. Hold on, baby, Rhonda, she's got you. Grab your computer, log on, baby, you got the power. It's the Rhonda Shear social lab. Hey, we're back. It's Rhonda here, and uh, welcome back to the Social Distance Social Hour. I'm really excited to introduce my next guest. I've known her for many, many years. She's a comedian. She's funny. She has a notorious past as well. She is an entertainer. She is an actress, she is a recording artist, she is an entrepreneur, and she's truly a madam. And she may have served a little time for that. And in Hollywood, that's huge. But let me introduce my dear friend, Jody Baby Doll, as we know her, Gibson, and see what she's up to today. And maybe she can tell us a little bit about- Hello, hi, gorgeous. Hey, gorgeous, how are you? Hi, gorgeous. Yeah, I'm here from my baby doll's garden. I love it. Yeah, well, this is quarantine. This is me anyway, really. It hasn't really changed because I work out of home a lot. But I brought some items from my new store. You look gorgeous. Thank you. So do you. By the way, proud of you, girl power. Proud of you for representing. Thank you. Do you love? Oh, it's so adorable. This was going to be one of the giveaways. Yeah, we're going to ask a couple of questions, quiz questions. Good. The winner gets a little baby doll giveaway. This is a doll boat. It's, um, it, can, it carries your cell phone, your keys, your makeup, your essentials. You can throw it on with a pair of jeans. It's precious. I love yeah, that. Really Behind me here, I've got a, a vintage uh, Vivian Tam Couture, famous Buddha dress. And then on my other side here, I've got a gorgeous buttercup silk Mark Carmen Belva formal gown. So I've got a lot, you know, we custom make, but I also have collectibles where I have pre-owned luxury items. Most of the things are custom made. Like this is a Vita bag called BAM. Comes with a strap, you know, little little novelty items and such. This is the Nikki shoe I did for Nikki Haskell. Yes. On Nikki Haskell. Yes, of Coral course. Coral suede with leopard hair. It's really, it was really. Another a great leopard. entrepreneur. Uh, that's it. Vitamin gal who's done so well. Baby doll's closet. So, okay, so Baby Doll's Closet. And, you know, looking to keep, looking to keep them. Oh, I was going to say, Baby Doll's Closet I is. I can't hear you. Looking to keep things upbeat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. So what I love about your Baby Doll's Closet is some of the things are from your real closet and from your career, yes. right? And yes. then some things are made for you. Well, are, are you, you are, make them? Yes, they are. There are a lot of collections there. You have to press menu. Most of the things are custom made, which means they're not sitting in a warehouse collecting ducks in a box. I right. make it for you when it, when you purchase the item. It's made right then and there. However, I do have a collection that is made of all pre-owned luxury items. Chanel, This Chanel bracelet's for sale there. 
his little Chanel bracelet. Very uh, cool. So, so is, yeah, this, this, is this on is this on Facebook only or do you have a website? No, 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 no. It's babydollscloset.com is the store. And it is on a, it is on Facebook, but it's on it's on the internet. It's not just on Facebook. So so did you start this pre quarantine then? Did how uh, how long have you been doing baby dog? I want to beat up coronavirus. I want to beat up coronavirus. I want to take coronavirus. I want to squeeze it. <laughs> Absolutely. Be gone. It'll be gone. It will be gone. But you know, there the, the cool thing about it, if there's anything cool, is that there will be a lot of entrepreneurs that come out of this and a lot of new businesses. And I think because we've been in shutdown, people are finding new businesses like Baby Doll's Closet. So I mean so, yeah, so you know what? I, I get that. And, and, and I mean, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer. I'd love to sit here and say, oh, yeah, you know, I found new callings and new things to do. The truth of the matter is people couldn't get food. People lost their businesses. Friends of mine lost their businesses. So, no, there's nothing good about it. Want to take it? I'm going to ring it. I want to beat it up. It, Bye. Be gone. Corona it will be gone. I'm feeling, I have a positive feeling. When we first yeah. started doing this show, I felt negative. I'm feeling much better about it just with some of the reports that, I, that I'm that i getting. And I have a lot of friends in the medical uh, field as well. well. But let's talk about Baby Doll. Because Baby Doll, if, for, I know many of you may remember, Baby Doll made many appearances on US yeah. well, all night. And she's a singer. About that. Oh, my gosh. All my fans loved you. And my producers loved you. And we would just do shameless promoting of all of your records and everything else. And that's what we were known for. But to, we, but I also want everybody to know a little bit about your past and that you were Hollywood's madam. So can you share just a little bit for people that are just meeting? I people? actually led a double, you know, I led a double life for like 15 years. When I did your show, okay, Yeah. you came up to me at a party. Do you remember how we met? I remember it was a party. I do remember that. You came up to me at a party. And you said, oh, my God, I have to have you on my show. And I was like, oh, okay, what show? We started talking, this and that. I told her I was a recording artist. All you knew of me was that I was baby doll recording artist who had a billboard on Sunset Boulevard. Yes. That's it. When I came on your show. Yes. Yes. And I wore my then cassette. We didn't have CDs. I thought I wore my cassette on my head. I yes. was doing the Dream of Genie deal with the phony ponies. Yes. And I had it. I had the cassette taped right here to the barrette, right on my head when I went on your show. It was hysterical. You go, baby doll, do you know you have a, your cassette taped <laughs> to your head? I said, yeah. I said, okay. okay, so you had fans from that, but you were leading this double life and you had another name. What was your other name? My mad name man? was Sasha. Can you imagine Sasha. that? Sasha. But you know, it's, I have to, if it's a ruthless business, it's a ruthless business. And there was no way that I was going to tell uh, a famous celebrity or a famous producer who I just booked eight girls in Palm Springs with for like $100,000 that, hey, I just made a baby doll track. Want to hear it? Uh -oh. It just wasn't going to mesh. But That's how, them. But so how, made perfect sense. How did you? But to everyone else, I knew, to, the, to, the, to the men I was dealing with, they saw me in a certain way because we were doing business, period. And, and you had huge celebrities and politicians and, and, and many of those people who have been now hit by the Me Too era. But um, so, you, so how, how are you doing this? I mean, how did, how, did it, <laughs> how did it start? I probably could have done the same thing. It was very manic, let me tell you. It was very manic. One day I actually sent the record producer to the girl's house and sent the guy to the studio. Oh. I was so much shook. I was running th like 300 girls, a million different clients, but I'm in the studio all day making records because that's what I wanted to do. I just wanted to make records for MTV. But, but, that's really what I wanted to do. But, but baby doll, so you, you, came, you came from a showbiz family. Your sister's an actress, Amy. So it was all natural. And the thing is, it's, my sister's an Emmy nominated soap star, Amy Gibson. Emmy, Amy the rest. Um, so, I mean, yeah. your, your background is heavy duty Hollywood acting and you are a great actress. So the thing is, you, no, I never was an actress. I never wanted to be an actress. Never, Mom, never, never. No desire. My well, mother you discovered funny. Tom Cruise, as you know, Tom used to sleep on my couch. I want to tell you, Tom is not a very nice person. I'm going to tell you the skinny on Tom. He's not very nice. Uh, my, what? That doesn't surprise me. 
He's that not doesn't... nice. He's not nice to people I know that have worked with him on set. Henry Winkler wasn't nice. So there you uh, go. Well, I'll tell you a little story. Yeah, he, he's not nice. I mean, I, I have friends that have worked on set with him that he's been really rude. Like, I'm, you know, you're nothing and I'm a star and you have to do everything I say. But with my mother, who discovered him and gave him the name Cruz, he was Thomas Mopather. He walked in Mopather. He walked out of her office Cruz. She got wow. him into taps with George C. Scott and Timothy Hutton. She got him all his big, big breakout parts and she got him his name. And then after he got famous from Taps, he broke contract and screwed her over and ran off with my gay cousin, Jerry, who's also a manager. Ooh. So he ran off with my gay cousin, Jerry. And my gay, true story, true, true story. I'm like, and that's why I'm, I'm actually considering filing copyright claim on the name because I believe my mother is due her copyright for giving him the name Cruz, which we can prove, which is on uh, public domain footage all oh, over the place. He just gave me the chills. It's so he, he it's screwed not- my mother over and he ran off with my gay cousin, Jerry. True story. This is my family. And um, never tried to fix it. Never tried to make it right. So you also have two books, right? Absolutely. And, you- and here's my argument, my legal argument. Right. Copyright. Right. Yeah. As you know, like Led Zeppelin. Yeah, totally. Totally. My mother should have gotten it. You know, like you always hear about Led Zeppelin, they're suing this band for right. covering this, that, and the other. That's because copyright has a 70 year statute. It's not like trademark. Copyright is a very simple law. You want to know what it is? It's one line copyright law. Whoever created it owns it. Area. That's it. With photography. Period. Photography. That's, That's it. it. Yeah. And there's a 70 year statute on it. Do it. Do it. We're behind 70 you. years. So, yeah, I'm going to go for it. You know, okay, tell us about I'm your book. Go for it. I tell us know. about your books, too. Do you still have your books on sale? Because there's books about your life. Well, what's happening now, yeah, well, my best-selling book, Secrets of a Hollywood Super Madam, did cover quite a bit of it. Um, right now, and it's really funny because I was actually thinking of a part for you. <laughs> Let me tell you what I thought of. Because right now, we're doing a scripted series. Scripted series. And a sort of auto bio documentary, but the scripted series is going to be very interesting. I was thinking of a part for you, not as one of the girls, cause you know, you'd be gorgeous, but right, I was right, thinking yeah. I could write something in for you. Are you there? I'm here. I'm here. Yes. Are yeah. you there? I'm here. Oh, yeah. I didn't know. Okay. I could write, I could write something in for you. You could be like a rival man. I love that. Do you love it? And we could have you gorgeous. You could be like one of the rivals that's always like fabulous and, and right. has everything. And you're just a right. rival. And you, Those are my I, girls. I can, I can write it. I can write it and tailor it to you. I think you'd be fabulous at it. Actually, I'm a little upset that you didn't ask me to go in business with you because gosh knows I had a lot of girls on. on can I tell all you night. something? You were so precious. Okay, let me share this with you. A little FYI. <laughs> When I would do your show, you absolutely had stables of girls. I mean, I, I, I don't know where you got them from, but every time we would talk, there would be tons of girls around you. So it wouldn't, it, it would be very, it would be very <laughs> insuiting. Um, however, what was so funny about it, which I'm sharing with you now, this was 20 years ago. <laughs> you would be sitting there talking about your girls, but I was at my peak of the Hollywood Madam Biz. At that wow. Time. wow. And I would be sitting there la- chuckling to myself. If only I could tell Rhonda. Listen, girl, we're going to go. We've, we've gone a little past our time, but it's okay. Um, we'll have you back on. I want you to Love sing. Love it. Love I want, you. I want you to sing the next time. I do. I'm going to have you sing the next time. Yeah, okay, yeah, we'll do something. I love you. I love your story. <laughs> Everybody go to babydollscloset.com. I will talk to you very soon. Love you, gorgeous. Good luck. I'm going to buy Bye. something. I want a t-shirt. I'm going to buy one. Love you. Oh, I'll give you one. Bye. No, no, I'll buy it. I can't take your money. Bye. <laughs> can't take your money. Bye. Now that is one interesting woman. You all have to go and look up and find her book, Jody Baby Doll Gibson, Fascinating Story. Pre Heidi Fleiss, um, I didn't know that she had that going on during my show at all. She was a singer. Uh, 
amazing double life. Beverly? 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 Comfort, support, confidence. That's what you'll find at RondaShear.com. Shop award-winning intimates, shaping, and apparel in sizes extra small through 3X. Going to the bathroom can be such a hassle. Oh, no! How many times has this happened to you? Well, now there's a better way. Introducing the Pecker Pointer. Its ingenious patented laser-guided design lets you set your target and pee. No more missing the toilet. No more peeing on your shoe. No more wet seats. No more mess. Just point the patented laser and pee. It's that simple. Pecker Pointer makes urinating fun. It's easy to put on and almost invisible. No one will know you're wearing it. The Pecker Pointer is great at parties. Use it for a training tool or play games. Peeing together saves time, water, and money. So if you order now, you'll get a second pecker pointer for a friend. And a floating practice target. Home video games cost tons of money and take up lots of space, but pecker pointer fits right in your pocket, and it provides hours of entertainment. Take it here, take it there, take it anywhere. Pecker pointer is durable and long-lasting. It's made from the same space-age polymer used by NASA. Order your pecker pointer today. I love our advertisers. They're fabulous. Anyway, um, Baby Doll Gibson was amazing. And I am so sorry that Beverly Center hijacked my show in the very beginning. Found her drink here. Okay. This girl's been doing this for me for years. She used to always like just do the same thing during up all night and hijack my show. But I'm back. And I've put her in a safe place downstairs. She was in my bar drinking all my alcohol. Anyway, I want to say hello since she did not, I didn't get to greet you personally. And we did have to pre-tape uh, Jody Baby Doll Gibson because, you know, she's out in L.A. and it's still light out there. But anyway, let's have a little fun now. Remember when I say hair, you know what you're supposed to do. Ready? Hair. Or... Hair. Or? I really like your hair. That's a fabulous Erica Flaskamp will be joining us later on. Fabulous musician. Anyway, cheers to you. And uh, so before I uh, bring on my next guest, which I'm really excited about, I'm, I'm, I'm doing, I'm bringing on my next guest right before, before we go to commercial or we're going to do a clip, right? Okay. We're going to do a clip. But before I do that, I have to do a little shameless plug for myself. Okay. So, you know, we're all wearing masks again because it's bad in Florida. So if you go to RondaShear.com, you can pick up this one. And have sequins. You can pick up this one and have a more of a lacy feel. Rondashear.com. Yes. They're very comfortable. And when you talk, your lips don't hit the mask so you don't get lipstick all over it. I kind of like this one. It's very shades of, uh, of gray. 50 shades of gray. Hello. Hello. You can breathe. You can breathe and talk. And then if you have a boy or someone in your life that wants to just go, go plain. We don't understand why. Um, you can order any color, including black. Look at the legs, the pink. 
Isn't that nice? Okay, RhondaShear.com. And you can also get this cute little outfit that I'm wearing. Woo! I'm feeling good. As a matter of fact, before I bring on our next guest, I have to do one more. Big hair, small hair is what I'm talking about. I like all kinds of hair, so just shut your mouth. Let it fall to your shoulders or your behind. Get a short coming over. You're looking fine. Oh, okay. I like the dancing part. I really do. And that brings me to my next guest. I'm going to play a little clip of the iconic Rockin' Doopsie Jr. And then I'm going to introduce him properly right after this, coming live from us from New Orleans, New Orleans. So... I want you to meet him if you don't know already about him. That's why let's go, Zodico. Do you can't go next? Don't lose your baba ball. Do you can't go next? I mean, legendary Rock and Doopsy. So um, before Roxy du Rock and Doopsy Jr., there was Rock and Doopsy Sr., who's iconic and just led the way in the world of Zydeco, was born in Karen Crow, his dad, Louisiana, which is like the home of Zydeco. And um, baby Rockin' Jr. grew up like wanting to play the accordion and got into the music. And then they started the Zydeco Twisters, he and his brothers. So they have played in front of White House, uh, in front of President Clinton. His dad's in the Smithsonian. Um, I, I don't know if it's his accordion, but I know that in one of the, I guess it's the, we'll ask him about that. <laughs> Which part is the accordion in the Smithsonian? His father's passed away. But he, uh, he literally, when you think Zydeco, and if you know the music of Zydeco, which is now international, and Rockin' plays internationally and is loved all over, um, he was the house band, the house band for Gail King and Kathy and Regis for, for a while. And he's got an amazing background. The most important thing he's ever played for was a really big birthday for me at the Royal Orleans Hotel in New Orleans when my husband surprised me with Rockin' Dupsy Jr. And let me tell you, there was people from all over the country there that night, and no one was dancing like that. So famous for the washboard, the most famous, uh, if that's the proper way to call it, um, in the world for playing that thing. Let me introduce to you a really dear friend, the most talented friend, Rockin' Dupsy Jr. Hey, baby girl, what's happening? Oh, honey, honey, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Thank you. I knew you had a VIP event tonight, so thank you for taking the time to yeah, come yeah. talk. Thank you, Definitely. thank you. And I know um, it's kind of sad, but it, but but iconic too that you played for the legendary Blaine Kern Senior's funeral yesterday. And if people don't know him, he is literally Mr. Mardi Gras. When you see New Orleans and you see the floats, he was ninety three, lived an amazing life. But you were great. I saw you on tape, and thank you for doing that. Thank you. Yeah, you know when I moved to New Orleans. In 99, uh, Blaine Kearns was one of the first people that really introduced me to the convention business. And that's how I got so great and doing a lot of great conventions and traveling, doing it like just a, mod a lot of Mardi Gras stuff. And Blaine was always a good friend. You know, we spent a lot of times together performing and just hanging out at 1179. I remember 1179 on the Annunciation. We used to hang out over there every night. Uh. He and I and, and, and Dr. John used to go there on Wednesday night and have dinner and a few cocktails. <laughs> uh, amazing man. And as you are. So did you move from, were you living in Karen Crow all those years? Up to now? Actually, actually, I was, my, my, my father was from Karen Crow and my mother was from Bow Bridge, Louisiana. Oh, but yeah. me and my siblings, we were all born and raised in Lafayette, Louisiana. 
So I'm I'm originally from Lafayette, and I moved to New Orleans in 1999. Wow. Well, so what's really interesting, you know, my husband lived in Lafayette for many years and in Karen Crow. So, I mean, I knew about Zydeco when I married him, which is almost 20 years ago. But you must have really introduced New Orleans to Zydeco because, you know, there's people think of New Orleans. I think uh, they used to think just jazz music. I think now they do think Zydeco, but I don't think back, you know, when you first moved there, it wasn't. Was, am I right? Or when did when did the movement of Zydeco really take off? In, in, in the mid-80s through the 90s, before my father passed in 93, I remember uh, performing with my father in New Orleans uh, every Friday night for maybe 10 years at the Maple Leaf Bar on Oak Street. And it was like always packed there. And you had a lot of great celebrities like uh, I said, you know, Dr. John Fats Domino, uh, a few times, uh, Dennis Quaid came in and jammed with the band, uh, Bono from the band U2. A lot of musicians just came through the Maple Leaf. Uh, Eric Clapton, a lot of great musicians came in and, uh, saw my father there, uh, Cindy Lauper, Paul Simon. That's how we got to be a part of the, uh, Paul Simon's Graceland album was, uh, at the wow. Maple Leaf down the Oak Street in New Orleans. Yeah. That is so cool. I mean, you're so dynamic. On stage, and I was reading that you were motivated, of course, by all the people that I, the Michael Jacksons and the Little Richards, because no one can do a split on stage like you. <laughs> you have no problem. No, you know, hey. A lot of my biggest influence was uh, a lot of the entertainers, such as Michael Jackson, Prince, James Brown. You know, uh, I always wanted to just be an entertainer. A lot of people are great singers and stuff, but my whole thing was entertaining. And I think for my father, that's what I was when I was a part of his band. I was his entertainer. But when he passed, then I had to train myself to sing and, and do both. And uh, actually, it worked out pretty well for me. Yeah. Oh, you are so beloved. And you've worked all over the world. And I know Zydeco is so beloved all over the world. It's yeah, really you know, uh, Zydeco has really stepped up. And, you know, Zydeco in French is a snap bean. It's, it's called a snap bean in French, the word Zydeco. And when my father and Clifton Chenier started playing the music in the late 50s, early 60s, it was called La La Music. And, La La uh, music. yeah, it was called La La Music. And they didn't start calling the music Zodiac Hotel like in 1966, 64, uh, cause it's like snap bean. You snap your fingers and, and there you go. And now everybody wants a piece of Zodiac music. You know, since, uh, since I've been playing, you know, uh, I've recorded and perform with uh, people like, uh, like I said, uh, Bob Dylan, Paul Simon, Beyonce, John Fogarty, you know, a, a whole lot of them. Everybody's just getting in on the Zydeco thing. You know, it, it's a great thing. It really it's is. A great thing. Boy, it makes you move and no one can, I mean, we got a little clip of you, but at, at my birthday party, you were, uh, I'm telling you, and you know what, Mr. Blaine Kern was there. He got to see you perform. Yep. We all got to see That's you right. So, you know what? I know there's a difference because my husband, well, you know, my, my stepkids and grandchildren still live in, in the Lafayette area and, and uh, not in Karen Park anymore, but in the Lafayette area. But um, there is a difference between French music, right? Real traditional French music and Zydeco. Yeah, well, well, yeah. Uh, French music is pretty much the Cajun culture on the, on the white side right. uh, <laughs> with, with, with a small accordion and, and pretty much a fiddle. And triangles and maybe a violin and Zydeco music was, was Creole. It's Creole. It's, it, it's pretty much rhythm and blues, like the old blues stuff. Like when you be hearing old things, songs back in the day, like some, uh, BB King stuff, uh, like, like old people just singing the blues while they cooking in the kitchen and stuff. You know, I remember my dad and my grandmother just listening to Cajun and Zydeco music. You know, to the, you know, you done me wrong, baby, but now I got to go. On. Well, 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 you know, just putting the blues, but, and, uh, that, 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 that do was, that was, do you have just, your washboard nearby? Do you have your I washboard? My, for you, I got my washboard. <laughs> and, uh, be, being, that, being that your husband is from the area I grew up with, I'm going to give you a piece of, uh, Cajun culture, which, uh, is all about Louisiana yeah. from the late one of the one of the great Hank Williams, you know, senior. It's like we gotta go, we gotta go, me oh my yo. We gotta go, roll our people down the fire. 
much like a Zodico 145 but I tell you back to your party that was a fun night because everybody people were dancing on tables and stuff I have to tell you when you throw a party you know how to throw a party oh we will throw other ones we, we will get beyond all this and we will throw in you need to be oh, there we, you need to come to Florida there. and wake these people up and teach them how to dance Girl, you invite you invite me I'm bringing the Zodico twists and we're gonna have a Zodico good time we're gonna have a Zodico party you know, you really need to play it. I'm going to speak to my friends over at the Mahaffey Theater when they open up. we got a sweet theater, and they would love you. It seats about 2,200 people. Oh, my God, they would just love you. We need that. We're going to really well, need that after the shutdown. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of people are ready to get out and hear live music again. But, you know, the, the, the main thing about everything right now is for people to be safe and follow the rules, wear your mask. You know, I think if everybody wear their mask uh, out in public, It'll be better for all of us because this virus may just go away and nobody's going to be spreading the virus. So, people, please wear your mask because I'm ready to get out there to dance and sing and shake my groove thing and do my splits and yell somebody scream. I'm missing that. (laughs) I know I'm missing it and I don't even sing, but I want to sing. (laughs) I love it, love it, love it. How, how, how How are you doing? We're doing really good. We're hanging in there. Van and I have really hunkered down. But, you know, I still have my toe in, in show business. I have a couple of auditions via tape. It's kind of fun. Kind of Girl, fun. You'll never, you, you'll, never, you'll never lose what you got. You know what I'm saying? You, no. Uh, no, you're an all, original. It's all good. Hey, I want you to meet someone who I have on the line because, you know, okay. I love to. Wait, I love to put people together. And this young lady who's, she's, she does my opening song and she's been singing for me for years. She moved to New Orleans because she, she was the biggest star here in the Tampa Bay area, sang at all the big parties and all that stuff. But she has the soul of a New Orleans girl and the voice of a New Orleans girl. So I just want you to say, because one day when you all can socially meet, you got to meet Erica Flaskamp. I don't know. Let me see if Miss Erica's there. She's coming. Here she comes. You will love her. And she, hello, hello, Erica. Erica. Hello. <laughs> hello. We'll have to get on, we'll have to get on stage with me. Yes, oh my God. I'd love to. She, she, I mean, you see here that I've already got, you see, I've already committed I, him to saying you have to get on you. stage. Oh, she can't hear. Well, that's all right. I'm, I'm going to tell Rockin while they're working on it that she's got to get on stage. This girl's got a voice. She's got the soul. She should have well, been born in New Orleans. <laughs> well, since you re- since you recommended her, I'm gonna put on the big stage. Maybe French Quarter Fest, a jazz fest, so the whole world could see her and 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 rock it out with me. Uh, oh my make god! It happen. That, make see, it happen. That gives me the chills because I love helping people. I love putting. I love connecting people. I mean, I know it because I know, like when you said Blaine did that for you. I love doing right. that for other people because sometimes you just like they just need that connection, and that's all they need. And it's so hard. And it's true because there's a lot of people out there that's so talented, uh, Rhonda, that really don't get the opportunity to to shine like like me or somebody else. But they have the talent, but they just don't know how to get their foot in the door. And and, and I like to help people. You know, I did a lot to help out my godchild, Amanda Shaw, the little fiddle player. And I mean, she. She's went real far in the music industry, and she's still doing good. So, you know, hey, somebody, somebody help me. So, I like to look out for, and I'd, That's- I'd love to sing with Erica. Have All right, Do you, can you see her? Can you see her? Can you hear me now, Erica? Yes, I can. Hear okay, you. so I'd love to introduce you to the legendary Rock and Doopsy, and here's Erica Flaskamp, who really was born in New Orleans, but somehow born, got born here instead. So, hey, I don't Erica, know how are you? <laughs> He's asking how, are how you? are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. I'm good. Well, good, well, you? well, well Rhonda, I, I hate to put you on the spot, but Rhonda is raving about your vocals. Can you blow a little something for me? Uh, sure. Do you want to hear some sugar pie? <laughs> Give me whatever you got, baby girl. <laughs> I love this. I'm going to put on my dress with the slits above the side. 
with that tight thin waist and then that low main line. Lord, I'm going to the party. Gonna have some fun. Gonna shake and shout until the morning comes. If you want to keep your man, you better get as sharp as you can. I'll be at my best when I put on my soulful dress. Well, I'm coming. I'm coming. Find you, girl, because you can. You can do it. You can do it. I tell you what. Uh, just by listening to your voice, there's an old song that I would love for you to do with me, uh, called Fever. Remember the song? Never know how much I love you. You never know how much I care. When you put your arms around me, I get a feeling that's so hard to bear. You give me fever when you kiss me. Fever when you hold me tight. Fever in the morning. Fever all through the night. And then you just pick up the next verse, you know. Oh, my gosh. You, you, if you don't know, that's like my favorite song. And yeah, some of the I mean, sexiest that, that's voices the ever. Class. And listening to her vocals, I mean, she 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 fit that. That that I mean, it, right. it's great. I think it's I think we work good together. You gotta we, learn we gotta, fever because you're young, you know, you gotta learn these songs. So Erica, so Erica, I mean, she can write. She's written all my fun things for me, can sing. Cool. And here she's she's running. I love this. You know, it's the shutdown. She goes to New Orleans, she moves there. She's running a um an Airbnb and she has an opossum as a pet. She fits in New Orleans. Really? Oh my. She, she well, we got we to gotta exchange information and hook up and uh, talk music, see what we can uh, make happen. That would be great. And, and, a, and a nicer person you couldn't, couldn't have. All right, well, Eric, I'm going to let you go, and then I'm going to finish up with rocking because I'm bad. I'm bad. Uh -huh. I like to put people together. Uh -huh. Love you. Nice talking to you, Eric. I hope to meet you in person, and we're looking forward to working with you, hopefully. She's a good girl. You know, I, she just needs that one person. You know, it's hard to hit New Orleans because people like to keep, you know, I get it. When I hit Los Angeles, no one was helping me. I Claude, right. Claude. So, well, you know, in, in, in Louisiana, everybody has, you know, their favorite artists that they've been listening to for a long time. You know, like like in the funk music, you know, it's the Neville family and the, the, the Dr. Johns of the world and uh, and and. In jazz, you know, you have like uh, the Marcellus family and, and Zodico, you got the Dupsies and the Buckwheats and, you know, you just, you just, and in the brass band, you got like Rebird and Kermit and Trombone Shorty and everybody like, you know, it's the same audits that they like to hear. We are, we are, a, but it's always good to bring somebody new on the scene, you know? Yes, it is. We are a blessed city and we even have Harry Connick. He grew, he grew up down the street from my parents. I'm telling you, well, I just remember well, him being you know, just. I just, I just, I just did his, uh, his TV show on CBS. It was called, uh, a, cool. a salute, a Grammy salute to the unsung heroes. And Irma Thomas was on the show. Uh, oh. she performed with Cindy Lauper, trombone saw to perform with Lil Big Time. And I performed with, uh, John Fogarty. We oh did Rode God. It on the River. It was I great. Can't. It was good. Uh, we he had great performers on there. He had, uh, Tim McGraw, uh, Jamie Foxx, he had great entertainers on there. You know, it was a great show. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. I love him. I got a lot of love from him. And I, I, I knew his father for a long time. His father his father was a great guy. I always was one of the sweetest people in the world. I'll, anytime I got in trouble, Mr. Connick would say, Doofy, <laughs> look, I'm going to take care of you this time. But, but next time, you're going to hold me. And, uh, you know, I'm, and he, he was like Mr. Kearns to me. I, I love him. Great old guy. And, well, and Harry, know, Harry, Harry was a sweet guy all around. So sweet. Well, for those of you who don't know, Harry Connick Jr., his dad was a district attorney, the most handsome man. And I ran for office. I, I don't know. If, I, I No, you weren't. No, you came later. This was much, much earlier. Yeah, but I ran for office in New Orleans. So, I mean, oh, I you know, know my love is New Orleans. I mean, I moved I moved really early to L.A., but, you know, I'm a New Orleans girl. And, and Doopsy, if you tasted my gumbo, I can beat any gumbo. I, I'm telling you, anywhere. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Now, now when I come, now when I'm coming to Florida, you're going to have to cook me a batch of that gumbo because I got to tell you. I do that, Rue. I don't take any short. There's no shortcuts. Everything's fresh. I, 
you just have to have my gumbo. My gumbo is like Zydeco. It's just all mixed up and thick and beautiful as you are. Yeah, peace out there, bon. You know, we're going to make it happen. And, you know, uh, I worked a long time with your cousin, the, uh, God Bridget. bless her soul, Alice oh, Paylat. And, and uh, Bridget was like a little sister to me, you know. And, uh, uh, yeah, we were, so we, we kind of connected. We kind of like family. We are you know? connected. So, so yeah, I'll have Bridget, for those who don't know, Bridget Paylat is my niece, and she was an she was a entertainment reporter in New Orleans. And her father was a famous entertainment attorney, Alice Paylat, and he just passed away. But they neither yeah. he or Blaine passed away from COVID. It was just age no. related. But they were also the people that did a lot for you. Well, Doopsy, yeah, I'm going to go ahead because we got our next guest. But I love you. Will you come back on and actually? We got to get you to I play would, more. I, I would love to. And it's always good talking to you. Thank you for having me. God bless you. Stay safe. Wear your mask. And uh, like we say on the bayou, let's le bon ton roule, I love the good times, bro. I love you. I love you. Have fun and be safe tonight. Thank you so much. You too, baby girl. Thanks. God You're bless you. Amazing. God bless you. Uh, Rockin' Doopsy Jr., ladies and gentlemen. Now, he that man has energy, soul. He, being around people like that, that's what we all need. We need a dose. That's better than B12. That energy, that positive energy. And um, played a little trick on him, but I just wanted him to meet Erica because she's so, 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 uh, so amazingly talented. But I do have to do one more thing before going to my next clip because I didn't, Rockin' didn't get to, I, got, I forgot to talk about hair with him and he's got long hair, but how's your hair, everybody? How's your hair? How's your hair? Hair. Little Erica there. Wait, one more. Dun, 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 hair. Mm. I should have been a singer, but I can't sing. But you know what? Next week I'm going to dance for you. All right. So I am very excited to introduce, um, a clip of, you know, my next guest. We did have to pre-tape him as well. So I'm sorry, but tonight we've been having some technical problems, but guess what? They're getting really good. We're getting much better. So hang in there, all my viewers that have been with me for over three months now, um, because we've got some really sophisticated equipment and uh, we're getting to it and we're going to be doing some really fun sketches and bits and all kinds of stuff. But this next gentleman, I interviewed him a few weeks ago, Jim Katz, and he talked to me and he'll, he'll tell you in this interview about how he produced and came up with the Corny Awards. Now, the Corny Awards is a really cool concept because you know all those incredible actors on screen that you go, oh my God, I know him, or he's so funny, or she's so amazing, but you don't know their names, but you see them in film after film. Well, he actually produced and created um, an award show just for those actors. So let's look at a clip from the Carney Awards, and then you're going to meet Mr. Jim Katz, a really good friend of mine. So every night, there was always more than one, probably two, three great TV shows on. And every one of those shows was filled with great character actors. Yet when award season came around, those character actors were pretty much all but ignored. We need to do a show that honors character actors. That's pretty much how it came to be. So the idea was born, but now they needed a name. Didn't want to go with just a character actor awards. It, it was a little too generic. And it just came to us, Art Carney, the Carney Awards. Jim found Art Carney's address and sent him this proposal but soon found out that nothing is that easy. Within two weeks, the envelope comes back, wasn't even opened, and it had stamped rejected. And on that day, I found out that Art Carney's son was a client of our agency. Vividly remember the time that we crossed in the hallway, uh, and uh, just jokingly, I said, um, don't touch me, I'm sterile which, of course, for all the Honeymooner fans knows what a great line that was. I remember going into his office and talking about this award show, uh, and it, it got me a little excited. Excited enough for Brian to drive up to Connecticut that weekend and introduce the concept to his mother and father. And I think his first reaction was, uh, well, do I have to do anything? Because I know he feels very self-conscious about things like that, uh, getting recognition for things like that. But I know he was very honored with the whole idea.
Hey everyone, it's Rhonda again, and I have a very, very special friend. I'm very lucky to have a lot of very special friends from all my Hollywood years. And um, this is a dear friend who is an amazing writer. To write is a whole nother talent that I can't even wrap my head, head around, except I did write a book. Have to get a little plug in there. But um, this gentleman is a stand-up comic, writer, uh, producer, He's just done a little bit of everything in Hollywood, has now moved to Florida, but, you know, he's got a, a foot on both coasts. Uh, a dear friend of mine, his name is Jim Katz. He also, his stage name is Jim Hudson. So if you see him during stand-up, which you will soon again, because everything will open up, he will be back on stage. He's hysterical. And what makes him even funnier than most is his writing ability, which is really what, you know, some of the new comics get up there and they just talk. It's all about writing. So, hi, Jim. Hope you're there. There you are. I mean, what an intro. Listen, uh, to see you, <laughs> we go back, God, I mean, 30, 30 years? I mean, close to it. Uh, and you oh, haven't yeah. talked a bit. My Lord, I mean, look at you. And uh, Oh, my God. Well, look at you. Look yeah, at you. Look, I... look, look, don't let the gray fool you. But, uh, you know, yeah. it's funny. the stand-up comedy which you were one of my inspirations because I remember going to watch you when you started it. And I still remember the jokes you did, but I never had the balls. Can I say that word? Uh, yes, you can definitely say that. Never had the balls to do until about two and a half years ago. And you know, the cool thing about stand up is, you know, I, I'm feeling this pull to do a, a, it again. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know if it'll happen, but you know, once you ha once you get that stand up in your blood and you get that first real laugh from the audience, not just someone sneezing, it's in your blood forever. Well, and it's funny because once you're up on stage, for me, it's great. It's the stress of waiting to go up that's oh. very rough. I mean, I'm pacing, I'm rehearsing in my head. But keep in mind, I started as a federal agent for the government. I was a treasury agent. That's, that's great. Was. And I have the material I have to pull from. But I, you know, I'm a CPA turned producer. Um, I acted for a bit in all these um these uh, real life crime TV shows, the reenactments, I usually play the cop, you know, I look like the cop. So during this whole quarantine, I, I think we've all memorized what's on uh, Netflix. I mean, uh, yeah. uh, absolutely. Okay. They, so, you know, so right now I, I got I to gotta take everybody back a little bit with you and I. So okay. how I met Jim is his brother was my agent and I, and his bro okay, your brother, David, Katz worked for Don Buckwall. He was like a big senior agent. He was young and they represented um, uh, Howard, Stern. Howard Stern and like all the big names. And they were in New York. And um, so back then up all night had moved to New York. And so David had started representing me. Then I met Jim and I felt like I definitely had more of a relation. Not, no, not, not that kind of relationship because Jim was too young, but um <laughs> I definitely, you know, I think you and I, in terms of personally, like really clicked where David was very. The second, the second you and I met, it was like, yeah, this is. Yeah, you know, we, we clicked. David started. It was, it was almost sisterly. And right. then you said, you know, I got to introduce you to my niece. You're going to love my niece. I'm like, uh, listen, I don't date 10 year olds. I thought your niece was <laughs> young, but, you know, she was probably 30 at the time. I think I was 40 and we fell in love. The second, and it happened to be on, at the night you would do one of you USA up all nights at that place in West LA with all the satellite dishes out front. I forget the name of it, but if you oh, so it's a very glamorous night. So, so what's amazing is my producers on the show, which is well, I have Marie Crane, but I also have my older producers um, in your genre of age. I have Jean May, and I also have um, um, oh, yeah, Ken. I forgot his name for a minute. Ken Bradley. Um, they went to Loyola with Brigitte. So, you know, it's all like one big family of people. Yeah. But uh, Brigitte's still out there. And my nieces, one day we'll have her on the air. I don't know. She could represent everything. She's been, she's been yeah. everything. But yeah, I was, I'm the quintessential matchmaker and I'm still not done with you. I'm already thinking. Uh, I've been waiting. Listen, I've been sitting here for 20 years until like, you know, this moment. So well, because, you know, People are not really good at fixing themselves up. And I still, I'm, I'm, st I'm not saying that the internet dating doesn't work because it does. I've had it work for friends, but, um, I still think the old fashioned way is good. And once we get beyond and we can start, it's, you know, you're right. I, but I'm I mean, where, how do you, I mean, back in the day, we'd go to bars and you'd see someone from across the way. I'd sashay over, you know, and, uh, but now 
I can't, I don't do that. If it, the music's so loud, I don't think it's age either. It's just different. It's a different well, time. It's very different. And I'll tell you what's also very different is that women, of course, younger women uh, for the most part are very, like if a guy makes a play for them, it's like a turnoff. It's it's kind of like, I mean, I hear friends of mine, my younger girlfriends and all the models that we have, they're like, oh yeah, if this guy's texting me or he's calling to me too much, that I hate that. I'm like, really? Like back in the day, we would wait for guys to call, you know? So it, I wouldn't want to be a guy. Like it's really hard. Like if you put up too much energy towards like dating someone, they don't like it. Uh, so you have to be very careful. So in the meantime, I'm going to take care of it for you, Jim. I'm going to just completely, I, 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 want, I want to hear some stories because, um, well, a couple of things. First of all, Jim has produced, he's done written. I mean, I mean, like writing blows my mind because I worked with a ghostwriter on my book and then I rewrote it and drove the ghostwriter crazy, but you got to do that. But you produced and you guys came up with the Carney Awards. And um, I want you to talk to us about the Carney Awards because I think, and I know my producers that are listening are going to flip over this. What were they? And is that still going on? Well, the, the answer to your question is, so my brother and I, we grew up with 60s television. I think, you know, think about what you had back then. Um, you had the Twilight Zone. You had every great character actor. And when I say character actor, you know, you look at people like William um, uh, Brian Dennehy, who just passed away. Brilliant character. Oh, absolutely. Faces, you know the faces, but maybe not the names. M. Emmett Walsh, one of the greatest. He was in Blade Runner opposite Harrison Ford. So we said, you know, we, there's no character actors. When they have Best Supporting Actor at the Oscars or the Emmy, it's usually Meryl Streep in a small right. And that's right. not fair. So we said, let's create an award show for character actors. But we have, to, we have to come up with a name. So we're thinking, my brother was like, you know, the Spencer Tracy Awards, I'm like, that, nah, or the M Emmys the, for M.M. at Walsh, and then it hit me, Art Kearney, and it just oh. flowed from the Honeymooners, I mean, one of the greatest of all time, and um, so I found his address online. Now, keep in mind, this is 20 years ago, so the internet was brand new. I found his address in Connecticut, and I sent him a letter with a wow. one of just him, and it's like he has this classic photo leaning on his chin. It was on the cover of TV Guide and the Carney Awards, the character actors, and I sent it to him and prayed. Probably a couple of months later, it came back unopened, and it had refused, the stamp refused, and I'm thinking, okay, well, not only did this guy get this, but he's not even opening it up. So just that day, you talk about my brother, Don Buckwall, Right. I told my brother, I said, yeah, the Carney letter came back. He didn't even open it. He goes, well, you're not going to believe it, but Art Carney's son is a client of our firm. Ah. As a voiceover actor, I said, we'll get to know him. And a couple of months later, Dave is walking down the hall. He sees Brian Carney. And to walk by, and then any Honeymooners fan will get this. Brian went up against the wall, put up his hands and said, don't touch me. I'm sterile, which is one of the greatest <laughs> episodes. David said, get in here. And he pitched him the idea. Brian yeah. said, I like this. He drove up to Connecticut. He showed it to his father. His yeah. father looked at it and said in his Norton voice, well, do I have to do anything? And Brian <laughs> said, no, Pop. And he goes, we'll make the deal. I'm flattered. And that, yeah. and that that's how the Carney Awards were born. And yeah. we just started to recruit people to do a sizzle reel. We had uh, Bruce McGill, who was D-Day in Animal House. Kevin wow. Pollack, Brad Garrett, um, uh, Mindy Sterling, uh, all these great character actors. And then, you know, my brother, who's partners, uh, business partners with Elvis Duran, the radio host out of Yes, famous. Uh, they said, you know what, let's just do it ourselves. So it took 15 years. Wow. From the point of that point to get the first one off the ground. And we held it in L.A. Um, the first year we had Bob Balaban, a great character actor, David Pamer. CCH Pounder, um, Bruce McGill, um, and it was held at the uh, the Paley Center in Beverly Hills. Fred Willard, oh. another great I mean, what a great actor, the best improv comedians ever. He hosted the first two years. Oh. The first year, he didn't even get paid. He just loved doing it, and it was just such a wonderful experience. And uh, you know, he is the quintessential person for this job. I mean, what a great, great uh, actor he was. And yeah, he was, absolutely. And the nicest guy. I got to tell you, I've worked with most of Hollywood. 
whoops, I don't know what, there we go. Most yeah. of Hollywood. Uh, and uh, one of the nicest, he, anything. He said, yeah, whatever you want to do, we'll do it. And well, some uh, of the character actors who you didn't know the names of were the great ones. I, I studied with, when I first got out to LA, Harvey Lundbeck. And yeah. Harvey Lundbeck was another one of those character actors that probably no one he would was, know. He was one of Penguin's uh, cronies on Batman. Uh, right. I also think there's a guy on, I think it's a progressive ad that's doing an exact impression of him. I, 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 I Bobbitt. I'm sorry, that was the name of the person. Lorraine right Bobbitt. <laughs> This is this is where my head's at right now, thinking about penis. No, that was good. That was good. A good callback. Um, but you know, there's these. I mean, great character. I mean, I think it's a brilliant, brilliant awards. And here's the other thing: that has there ever been an awards? I, I'm going to come back to the corny awards. But has there ever been, or or is there a Hall of Fame for comics in general? I'm sure there is. Um... God, there's so much for that. And actually, starting in 2017, we, we named it the Carney Awards Character Actor Hall of Fame. So I'm sure just about for everything, you know, AFI has their annual thing. Um, you know, they all have it. Uh, we're the first and only ones to do it for character actors. But I there's so many comic stuff with the Montreal Comedy Festival and all that stuff. There has to be, um, you know, and there's so many outlets now. Uh, for comedians. Uh, so, so much more because there's so much more content and there's so many names that you see all the time. I mean, let's say names, people that you see all the time, but you don't recognize them. So are you all still doing this or has it? Well, what happened is we were self-financing for four years. So each year we grew, we moved uh, out of the Paley Center to the Broad Stage in Santa Monica, which is over 400 seats. And, uh, you know, it was a real live stage and set and we got a, you know, we got Allison Janney to present. Uh, we got Harrison Ford to present, yeah, which yeah. is rare, uh, you know, but, it, and we had a live orchestra and it became big, but I was doing most of the work and it just was too much for me to handle. We didn't really have much network support. We had it on TV the last two years, but it's not like when you have like NBC or ABC, they throw the whole you don't need them. Thing. You don't need them anymore. You can do it on YouTube. And yeah, but, people, but again, you know, at you least... Were, uh, were you writing it all? You didn't even have Bruce Valanche? You were doing it by yourself. <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't even got at that. But we didn't want the typical, you know, no, the, you wanted the to writing do, of the... You need to do this again. And so I'm going to make a pitch right now on, on, on live internet. Um, we have the most amazing theater here, which I have, I know a little bit about, and it's called the Mahaffey, and it holds about 2,500 people, and it's the sweetest theater, and there's a lot of television production in this area, and I think you need to get it going again with your brother. I know he's a newlywed, but he needs to get out of that newlywed phase and, and, and get this going again. I mean, this is really important, well, we especially with all the content now. We need a sponsor. And I'll tell you, I, I honestly, in my own opinion, I don't think TV right now is that crucial. I think it's getting the sponsor name on the, the step and repeat behind you. Because, first of all, any of your listeners, if they go to the thecarneyawards.com, you can see what we're talking about. But the pictures from the red carpet, they last forever. If you... Google Alice and Janney Carney Awards or William H. Macy Carney Awards. Right. Those pictures last forever. So to have a sponsor name behind them, that's worth gold. I mean, well, well, we're going to do it. Those are the roles that uplift everything. But yeah, those are the memorable. Listen, Tom Cruise, who's a great actor, but he's always Tom Cruise. When you watch him, it's always Tom Cruise. Right. You know, right. But people like even Harrison Ford considers himself a character actor because you get lost into his performance. Right. I just saw him in The Call of the Wild a few months ago. It was a wonderful performance. You know, he played right into that role. You, you know, um, and that's what it's about. I'm so proud of you. You look very handsome. I love what you're doing. I love that you're in Florida. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad that you popped on for us, and we're so uh, happy. I love and it. the next time you come on, though, you have to be ready when we talk about hair to take a sip. Yeah, well, um, nothing's here, so I'll... Uh, okay, you can do it later. You got but, it. Uh, I love you, Jim, and um, nice talking to you. And my puppy's All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I got rid of the bitch, Rhonda. Had to get her out of her own house. You know, that's the way it is.
because I'm really the store here. I've always been the store. She's always wanted to follow in my footsteps because I am a fashion icon. Fashion icon. She's not even drinking liquor. You know, she's drinking water. She's a, she's a fake. Everything's fake. Tits, everything. Anyway, since she's not around, I'd like to thank her guests, which are now my guests, the fabulous Jim Katz, the fabulous Jody Baby Doll Gibson, and the one and only, and I am mad for him and have a little crush myself, um, that would be Rockin' Dupsy Jr. and then Everka Flaskamp, who's fabulous. And so I'll make a couple little promotions since you're going to be seeing um, more of me. First of all, I want you to look at Rhonda's pups and how she treats them. By her feet. By her feet. Look at that. She just has them hanging around by her feet. It's really sad. She doesn't give them any love. She just shoves them down there. Okay. Now, this is what I want to talk about before I go. Go to www.rondashearsocialhour.com. You can see all the shows from the beginning. Some suck, some are good. I'm not in them, so the ones that I'm not in suck. From this night on, they'll all be fabulous. Okay, that's the first thing. So www.rondashear.com. Also, this show is getting ready to be a podcast. Yep, it's going to be a podcast. You'll be able to listen to it as well as watching it. Ain't you lucky? I'm telling you, it's fabulous. You know all these other people that are doing these little things around the country? They suck. They suck. You want to know the best? You come here and you watch Beverly Center Social Hour. Now, this is where you can find yeah, Who stops snoring? I'm talking. Okay. So you can find it on www.rondashearsocialhour.com. You can find it on Rhonda Shear's fan page. And you can also go to YouTube. Yes, the Rhonda Shear TV. Rhonda Shear TV. Sign up. You'll see me. It's amazing. You'll see me on Rhonda Shear TV. Well, I think that's about it. I wish there was real booze in here, but what can I say? Bitch is cheap. Hey! Good night, everybody. Have a great evening. Stay safe. I really like your hair. I really, really like your hair. How many you don't know what to do? Hold on, baby, Rhonda, she's got you. Grab your computer, log on, baby, you got 